Look, there's a lot that goes into this. This is an extremely difficult list to make. There is not a chance I could make this list and have everyone be like, yeah, you nailed it, good job. It just doesn't work like that. So I'm sorry, there's a more than likely chance that at some point during this list, you're gonna be like, hey, I totally disagree with that. And that's okay. My mind has changed so many times throughout the years, and I am not dead set on this being my definitive list. Things were changing left and right, and this is just what I landed on at the final hour. This will be a three-part video. In this section, we will go over the five players I have just outside of my top 10 in the 15 to 11 spots. This section was by far the hardest part for me to come up with. My top five was easy. My top 10 was a little bit trickier, but I had a good idea of where people would land. But my top 15, yeah, I have no idea. But that's part of the reason I love this. There is no definitive list. You could have five completely different people in these places and have equally as good of an argument. Now, the way that I rank these players is a combination of their actual performance on the show and their general ability as a player to perform on any given season. Out of these five players today, four of them have glaring holes in their game that stop them from reaching the top 10. So without further ado, I think it's time I stop messing around and count down the top 15 players in Big Brother history. Bro, I went through this season like it was nothing. It, this season was easier for me than the last one. Starting out this list, we get the player with probably the biggest glaring holes out of anyone in the top 15. At the number 15 spot, I have Enzo Palumbo. Enzo has played Big Brother two times. In Big Brother 12, Enzo placed third, and in Big Brother 22, Enzo placed second. In over his two seasons, Enzo won a total of two HOHs and two POVs. Physically, Enzo is not great at competitions. Strategically, he's adept, but too often, he plays for his alliance as opposed to playing for himself. But I'll be damned if Enzo is not the single greatest social player of all time. Everyone wants to work with Enzo and nobody ever wants to target him. It doesn't matter who you are, your age, your background, or anything at all. Enzo will effortlessly connect with you and make you feel like you're on the ins with him. This type of social magic is likely part of the reason why Enzo was in two of the most successful alliances of all time and it helped Enzo to not be nominated for the entire season in All-Stars 2. Many may forget, but for the first half of Big Brother 22, Enzo was not only positioned better than Cody, but he is the only person who would have stayed if he were sitting next to Cody on the block together, and he actually had a real shot of beating Cody in the final two at that point. Enzo has had so much social capital in both of his seasons. However, his fatal flaw has always been that he never capitalizes on it. He makes these ridiculous bonds with people, but he never pulls the trigger to make that bigger move with all of that ammo. And it's the reason why he has never been able to close the deal in either of his seasons. Even still, Enzo is the type of player that could come back a third time and make it just as far if not further, and with a few tweaks to his endgame, he could very well become a Big Brother winner. So even with his glaring holes, it's enough to place him in the top 15. My strategy is none of your freaking business. Hit it, touch it, rub it, love it, taste it. Okay, Howie, just wanted to let you know that I'm not your daddy or there's nothing, you know what I mean? Look at this, baby. Papa got the bling bling. Reagan could cry. It's a bitter pill to swallow, but swallow it. Right here. It's my time now. Madam Meow Meow starts to play. Yeah, one POV. Yeah. Best social game ever in the history of Big Brother. Enzo, I'm sorry, man. I have to bit you. I You're not. There's no winner on this season is winning it with me in it. Yeah. There's no way, yo. Okay. Let's go! Okay. That's it, right here. New HOH, right here. 10 years I waited for this opportunity. I don't care who is in this house. I'm coming after everybody. I want blood all over me, yo. If you don't like this face, it don't matter because I'm here till the end. I'm here to win this thing. This is my fate. I mean, I was in a spot in this house where I did not have to win anything. And this guy kept saying, bro, you're in a good spot again. So, I mean, I think I played awesome, bro. I mean, 10 years later, Never on the block, this is it. This is my first time on the block, man. And I want some competitions. I want some competitions. <laughs> Let's sprinkle that on a little bit. Enzo, you always make me laugh, thank you. <laughs> Up next, we have one of the toughest players to rank due to the fact that their game was so hindered by a twist that we never got to see their full potential as a game player. So at the number 14 spot, I have Eric Stein. 
Eric played Big Brother just once on Big Brother 8 where he placed 5th and he managed to win just one power of veto. Eric was not the most physically gifted player, but Eric thrived in the social and strategic game. Early on in the game, he was able to form a very strong and solid power structure around himself, so much so that in week 5, Dick and Danielle tried to backdoor Eric, but he managed to barely survive it by rallying up his numbers to send Kale home over him in a vote of 4-3. to three. Through the first 16 seasons of Big Brother, this was the only time that a player was able to survive a legitimate backdoor attempt, and that is extremely impressive. What's even more impressive is that immediately after Dick and Danielle tried to backdoor him, Eric repositioned himself in the house and made a core alliance with them, the people who just tried to backdoor him, and he was then sitting pretty for weeks to come. Eric typically always knew the correct strategic decision to make at every point in the game, but that leads us to the main thing about Eric and why it's so hard to rank him. Eric was the main twist of Big Brother 8, and he was named America's Player. Basically, this meant that all season long, Eric was a puppet to the viewers, and for a very surface level explanation of what this meant, all of Eric's moves were driven by America. Eric had to target whoever America wanted gone, and Eric had to vote out whoever America chose to evict. So even with this hurdle of not being able to play his own game, Eric navigated playing America's game as well as anyone could given the circumstances, but it ended up being his downfall. Because as much as America liked Eric, it seemed that they liked the Donatos more. So Eric was basically forced to play for them to win. Eric knew at the final seven that he had to turn on Dick and Danielle before they turned on him, and he even won the veto that week, but he was unable to use the veto to send one of them home due to being America's player, and eventually the Donatos got the upper hand and sent home Eric in fifth place. Had Eric been able to play his own game, Eric is very likely the winner of Big Brother 8, but even still, the potential behind Eric as a player is enough for him to land at the number 14 spot. <laughs> I'm Eric, and no one's ever played this game like me before. Making Kale and Eric the winners of this HOH competition. There is no way in hell I wanted to be one of the last two people standing there. I don't want to go anywhere near a head of household. So it looks like I'm going to be America's player. Welcome to reality TV's first alliance of 10 million. I got the brains, I got the cutthroat skills. We're going to have some fun. We're going to bring it home, America. I might be, an, but I'm not a liar. You're the liar. I most certainly are. You got one thing right in this well, conversation. No, two, liar. Nope. With all of that said, I'm sorry, but Eric, I choose to not be you. <laughs> it's a desperation move. They're trying to bury the player that they think is the best player and the biggest threat to them. It's gonna blow up in their face. Dick and Danielle, they are buried dead in this game. Eric, you are safe. Kale, you've been evicted from the Big Brother house. That is correct. Congratulations, Eric. You have won the power of veto. Woo! That's it. Welcome to the veto competitions, baby! Woo! They say to expect the unexpected, and that is why I am choosing to not use the power of veto this week. By a vote of two to zero, Eric, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. I feel like I played the best game I could possibly play under the circumstances. I had obstacles that nobody else had to deal with in this house. It's the way it is. It was my job to honor America's wishes. Unfortunately for myself, I did a great job in doing it, and they were pulling for the people that sent me out of this house. Following Eric, we have the one player on this list who doesn't really have any holes in their game, and he's just a really solid Big Brother player. If I strictly look at their Big Brother game, they probably don't actually crack the top 15, but their performance on another show made me more confident in them as a player overall. So at the number 13 spot, I have Hayden Moss. Hayden played Big Brother just once, where he was crowned the winner of Big Brother 12, and during his tenure inside the house, he managed to win 4 HOHs in 1 veto. When it comes to facets of the game, Hayden is good at pretty much all of them. Physically, he was great, socially he was very solid, and strategically he was actually quite good. In week 1, he nominated both Brendan and Rachel, but in week 2, when Rachel won HOH, Hayden managed to slide on by and he wasn't targeted. Although he was nominated a few times, he always had safety nets like Kristen in place that would end up taking 
taking the bullet over him, which allowed him to survive eviction night twice, even though he was arguably the bigger threat to win both times. Maybe not against Reagan, but still, having all three possible voters at the final five voting to keep you is very impressive. Obviously, Hayden was helped by being part of the brigade, but after the first few weeks, Hayden eventually became the driving force of their success. Hayden knew when the right time to turn on that was. He entered the final three in a spot where both other players were going to take him to the final two, and he beats them both. And throughout the season, even when things didn't go his way, mainly in regards to Brendan and Rachel winning a massive amount of competitions, Hayden was able to navigate through the rough waters pretty flawlessly, and he still managed to put himself into an endgame scenario where he was the odds on favorite to win. Although we never got to see Hayden fight from the bottom on Big Brother, we did get to see it on Survivor. Here is your one second warning about Survivor spoilers. Okay, without going too in depth on what happened, basically it was the final six of Survivor and Hayden walked into Tribal Council down in numbers four to two and was about to get voted out. But in his last ditch effort, he managed to not only flip one of the numbers on the other side over to his side, but convinced her so well that she willingly put herself in a spot where she had a one in three chance of instant being voted out while also leaving Hayden completely immune. For the Big Brother equivalent, imagine if at the double eviction of Big Brother 24, when Michael was about to be headed out the door, that during his eviction speech, Michael was not only able to convince Alyssa to flip her vote, but to then go a step further and have her take Michael's seat in the eviction chairs and leave it up to a one in three random chance that she would be evicted instead while Michael is left completely immune. Needless to say, it was a really impressive survival move. Overall, Hayden's solid stats in all areas of the game, plus him showing he has the capability to pull a rabbit out of a hat Dan Giesling style, is enough to put Hayden in the top 15. I'm the most competitive person you'll ever meet. And I'm not gonna lie, the ladies love me. That's what's gonna take me far in this game. I won the HOH week one. It's bittersweet. I got a big target on my back, huge. Everything was going perfectly. I had the brigade in my back pocket, Kristen wrapped around my finger, and Captain Kosher, he ruined my entire game. Now I'm gonna have to work my freaking tail off just to stay around for another week. You're full of dude. Why? Because Is you're so smart, Kristen. Yeah, I you have am. a fashion degree. Yeah. And you are because you have a chemistry degree. String a sentence together oh, without using man. the word like, will you? <laughs> you have uh, zero common sense, zero. Oh, I have no common sense. Zero. Two HOHs. Kristen. You are evicted from the Big Brother house. Reagan, you've been evicted from the Big Brother house. I'm the HOH. One in three shot at half a million bucks. So we are doing that I control the nominations. I control the veto meeting. Who goes with me to the final three? 250, which means congratulations, Hayden. You are the final. <laughs> Dude, what are you, hey, were you gonna evict I would say our social game's almost similar. Uh, neither one of us were ever a target. We both had our secret alliance, we both had our side alliances, about equivalent in terms of the social game. What separated me is the competitions. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't the question, but you let it slip on in there, Hayden. And the winner of Big Brother is, congratulations, Hayden. <laughs> Now, I really went back and forth on whether I should place this player higher or lower than Hayden, but in the end, I decided to give her the leg up. At the number 12 spot, I have June Song. June played on one season of Big Brother where she was crowned the winner of Big Brother 4 and she managed to win one HOH in one veto. June wasn't a comp beast, but she definitely wasn't bad and she could have won more had she not thrown some of the comps. When it comes to the other aspects of her game, the biggest red flag of June as a player was that socially, the jurors just did not like her and she likely would lose in the end to most of the players on her season. However, June absolutely knocked it out of the park when it came to the strategy, and June is without a doubt one of the greatest strategic minds of classic Big Brother. One key thing about June is that she was fantastic at thinking outside of the box. She volunteered to be the house cook, not only in the hopes of having her cooking be an enticing reason to keep her around, but also so that she had an excuse to be in the kitchen all the time without looking suspicious, allowing her to watch where certain conversations were being held while also improving her odds of being in the right place at the right time. June was 
was the first to perfect the floating strategy, where instead of having a rock solid alliance that she was forever loyal to, she would go to whoever had the power and buddy up with them to ensure that she was never going to be the HOH's target. June was also the only player to fully take advantage of having their ex in the game. While most of the other exes floundered and failed to work together, June and G realized the benefits that would come from secretly working together, and it tremendously helped both of their games. One of June's flaws in the game was that she wasn't exactly the most liked in the house. However, June recognized this and formed her entire endgame around it. She knew that she wasn't going to win in many scenarios of the final two, but the one that she would win would be against Allison, who was also not liked by the other house guests. So June teamed up with Allison to make it happen, and from there on out, it was lights out. June had some solid endgame moments, winning the final five HOH and finally taking out her ex G, or the classic moment of June successfully outthrowing the final HOH to Allison, a somewhat risky move that paid off as it forced Allison to vote out Robert in third place and lose his jury vote. June defined what it meant to be a floater during Big Brother 4, and she used that to help make it to the end, where she was able to beat Allison in a vote of 6-1. to one. And Do you dock June points for being disliked by most of the jurors and therefore losing in most final two scenarios? Or do you give her props for recognizing her position, figuring out her one path to the victory, and then flawlessly executing her plan resulting in the win? Given her ranking, I'm assuming you can figure out which of those two groups I fall into. I'm June, and you're gonna love me as much as I do. I don't date Asian men. Um, I only date Caucasian males. We were um, first loves, and um, ooh, that kind of makes me sick right now, but anyway. I'm not gonna make any kind of suggestions to Nathan. Damn, you looked so hot. Like I for sure, 100%, without a doubt, know that you will go with whichever road I choose to take from this point on. I think for the most part, Dana trusts me, but we're not friends. This is a game, and I'm going to use whoever I need to get to the end. The queen of the big brother house would probably be me. I think everyone loves me, and, and they should love me. I make them laugh, and I feed them. June, for sure, is, is the master wizard in the kitchen. I don't think anyone is thinking that G and I have any sort of alliance. You just have to keep being careful. The alliance I have with G is probably the strongest one I have in the house. We've kind of played along that we don't like each other. And it's because, sincerely, there is this underlying um, disdain for each other. Right now, Allison and I, although I hate to admit it, are playing pretty similar strategies. June is floating. Um, she likes to jump from side to side by week to week by HOH to HOH. And that's not cool, because that's my trick. I mean, uh, hell would freeze over first, but maybe even Allison and I will become a pair. I'm sorry, Erica, time is up. This means congratulations, June. You are the new head of household for the first time this season. I'm not gonna come out to you. June and I still do have a secret alliance. I just look at her as kind of a tool to get, you know, to get further in this game. Oh, the alliance with G is broken. I think my alliance with Allison will take me to the end. I would love to go up against Allison because I know she has many enemies, um, both inside and outside the house. Answers, please, okay. Jew, <laughs> obvious winner in this one is Allison. Congratulations. It's our house. It's our house. It's our house. <laughs> like, coming in here, you knew you were going to be up here, didn't you? What, in the finals? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, June, by a vote of six to one. You are the winner of Big Brother 4. Congratulations to you both. And now, the final player. The player that lands just outside the top 10, but in a more optimistic viewpoint, the best player in this video at the number 11 spot, I have Maggie Osborne. Maggie played on one season of Big Brother, where she was crowned the winner of Big Brother 6, and she won one HOH and one veto. What makes Maggie's win so impressive is that she was the cult leader that actually managed to win the game. Maggie was an excellent strategic thinker, and she took hold of her alliance like nobody really had before. After her secret partner Eric left in week 3, there were two clear sides of the house, and whichever side took the numbers advantage by the jury stage would have the overall say in who won the game. 
right before the jury stage was to start, Howie, a member of the opposing alliance, won the HOH. But it took Maggie merely an hour to talk with Howie and convince him to target James and Sarah, two members of his own alliance. Not only was this one of the best persuasive moves ever made up to that point, but with this move, it set things in motion that allowed the friendship to have the numbers advantage, heading into jury where they then had to say in who would win the game. And with Maggie as the leader, it meant that if Maggie was sitting in the final two chairs, she was likely gonna win the whole thing. Maggie was able to tactically instill fear into her own alliance by having everyone agree that they would never vote for someone that betrayed the alliance to win. And this kept them in line and really spoke to Maggie's ability to lead an alliance in a cult-like way. Now, there are a couple of glaring holes in her game. For starters, she was ready to go home for Cappy in week three. And while yes, that is a huge red flag, this was someone that she came into the game with, and that's a giant element of the game that is typically never present in Big Brother. Secondly, Maggie was one final HOH double tiebreaker away from losing the game. Had Janelle beaten Yvette in the final HOH, Maggie does get evicted in third place. However, the fact that she had such fear and loyalty instilled into Yvette to the point that Yvette felt the need to go out of her way to win the final HOH so that she could bring Maggie to the end speaks major volumes, especially considering that had Yvette thrown the final HOH, there's a good chance that Yvette ends up being the winner of Big Brother 6. Maggie's ability to have a stranglehold on her own alliance while also being towards the bottom of the opposing alliance's hit list is an extremely impressive feat. She's still to this day the only U.S. winner to not make it to part three of the final HOH and still win the game. And to me, she is one of the most impressive one-time players of all time. So she lands at the number 11 spot. I'm Maggie. And the other house guests are going to need a nurse when I get done with them. Play like okay. you're going to stay. Okay. 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 But I, I think you're way off. Have I been wrong yet in this game? By a vote of five to four, Eric, you have been evicted from the Big Brother house. Congratulations, Maggie. You are the new head of household. Carry out the way you want. I'm going to do exactly what Kathy wants. Yeah. Maggie and I are now playing for Eric. James came in to apologize, so I let him apologize. I don't know what that other person is contemplating. What do you do for a living? Because <laughs> I... what if it's the same thing as me? Oh my God, wouldn't that be ironic? You're a nurse, aren't you? Am I? She had that room set up like a perfect interrogation room. She had herself at a raised position. She had me at a lower level. I couldn't read crap on her. Do I need to be worried? About what? About me. But I can't trust anything in this game. I don't have a partner. The goal of this week is to ensure that no one from the friendship gets nominated. Uh, and you give me your word that they are going on. Google and and okay. Sarah's and James's keys will be the two that are not in the box. Okay. The friendship would have looked um, very poorly on Howie for not putting up James and Sarah. I choose to use it on Maggie. I think I'm gonna vomit. <laughs> Guys, I'm so sorry I was taken off the block. It's not your fault. Cause I don't wanna put someone else through what I, what's going on right now. I really don't think she would. April is very loose with information. I'm sure Janelle was not calling her up there for fashion advice. I have not made any deals with anyone outside of the friendship in this entire game. Congratulations, Yvette. You are the final oh head of household. Oh Join Yvette and Janelle in the living room. <laughs> I think I made it this far in the game because of the loyalty I had to a certain amount of people and I never crossed over that loyalty. And a little bit of it was um, not opening my mouth even when it was extremely tempting. You think that Maggie tried to get everybody to do her dirty work? Yeah. Maggie did get everyone to do her dirty work. That's why you guys are sitting here. Right. Psychologically, she had you guys beat. I think Maggie possessed all the qualities. She bonded your group. I think she played a phenomenal game. Congratulations, Maggie. You are the winner of Big Brother 6. Starting at the top 10, we have a player that is probably going to make a lot of people mad. At the number 10 spot, I have Nicole Franzel. Nicole has played Big Brother three times, where she placed seventh in Big Brother 16, was crowned the winner of Big Brother 18, and placed third in Big Brother 22. 
Nicole's racked up six HOHs and three vetoes, although a pair of those HOHs ended up being dethroned. And she also holds the record for the most days spent inside the house at 255 days. Nicole is so tough to rank because compared to every player above her, she's a much less powerful player. And when looking at the best of the best, she likely loses a hypothetical head-to-head -head battle against any of them. But Nicole is so unbelievably good at surviving in the game and putting targets in front of herself while also maintaining a level of respect from the other players, which is a really hard and impressive thing to effectively balance. Nicole is the silent threat that thrives on being underestimated. On Nicole's first season, she was never in the majority alliance. However, she fought hard all season long and was the only outsider that even had a potential shot at winning the game. And even though she placed seventh, she lost to two of the best players in the history of the show. So I cut her a little bit of slack. Then on her first return in Big Brother 18, she quietly held a power position for the majority of the season, was never even close to being in a spot where she would be evicted. And when she lost power during Polly's downfall, Nicole turned things around with a well-timed bluff that paid off extremely well. Maybe I'm reaching a little bit, but the floater game that Nicole played from the final seven up until the end of the game was probably the most perfect and impressive back and forth that I have ever seen in Big Brother. It helped her not be nominated all the way up until the final four, and overall, it ended up with her snagging the victory over Paul, making her a Big Brother winner. Then, on her third season, Nicole entered the All-Star house as one of only two winners, and even still, she landed herself in the most powerful alliance of the season, managed to narrowly survive a triple eviction that put her in the line of fire twice. She won two crucial endgame comps to put her in a spot that basically guaranteed her final three, and she came just one question away from making it to the final two for a second second time. We even saw her do something that she was notoriously not the best at. Lie convincingly. She was able to leverage her already shaky relationship with Devon to lie about her vote to evict Ian and pinned it on David, which caused dissonance between Devon and David, fracturing any possible chance of the outsiders coming together to overpower Nicole's alliance. Nicole definitely has some flaws in her game, and the nature of her strategy does largely rely on her closest allies needing to be taken out in order for her to win. But at the end of the day, she is a Big Brother winner with a third place finish as well. She spent the most days inside the house and is one of the best examples of how dangerous it is to leave an underestimated player like her in the game. She makes it into the top 10. I'm a little quirky. I talk weird. I kind of have an accent. All right, come on, let's keep our lead, Miranda. I was just told that I was a target and that I'm definitely going home this week. And 30 seconds later, the whole house is talking about if they want chicken or fish. At this point, I feel like they're heartless. It's pretty sad that this girl is more willing to make big moves than big beast mode. I thought he was gonna put a prank. Why wouldn't he put him up? Because he's a wimp. By a vote of four to zero, Nicole, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. The game play me. This time, I want to make sure that I'm here to play Big Brother. I'm the worst actress in the entire world, but at this point, I need Corey and Tiffany to think that I don't want the HOH because I kind of do. You gotta start making friends. That's what you gotta do. I'm not, I'm not even joking. This has to be like one of the stupidest moves ever. You basically just handed me a nominee on a silver platter. Earlier today, I definitely thought that Corey and I were next on everyone's hit list, but before the eviction, Polly decides to stir the pot quite a bit. Cole tells me pretty much that Paul has been throwing my name out there, and I kind of believe her. So at this point, it might not be such a bad idea to work with Corey and Nicole. Although I'm feeling pretty good about the final four with Vic and Paul, I would like to keep James and Natalie in my back pocket as an option. Dang it, I wore my lucky sweater. <laughs> I haven't seen that face all season. Then I realized, Nicole, you're here this season to play Big Brother, not Big Baby, let's go. Once Polly left, it was him and I were completely alone. So I knew I had, I had to convince Natalie to put up two of her own allies up on the block. I won the next HOH in the veto, con made an alliance with the two strongest guys in the house, Vic and Paul, as a final four deal. I don't know. <laughs> Congratulations, Nicole. You are the winner. I hate lying. I hate pretending like I'm shocked. It's absolutely terrible. But you know what? I have to stick to it at this point. You swear. I swear I voted to keep Ian. That's why I try to play this game the right way. 
the fact that I survived triple eviction, <laughs> triple eviction, but I almost went out of the house twice tonight, freaking twice. Yeah, baby! Good Woo! job. Nice work. Good job. Sorry, I haven't won yet this season. I'm sorry. <laughs> but Nicole, I'm so sorry. It's official, Nicole. You are the last person evicted from the Big Brother house. Up next is the player that, funnily enough, I had no real qualms with where to put her. I always knew that this was where she was gonna land. So at the number nine spot, I have Vanessa Russo. Vanessa has played Big Brother just once, where she placed third on Big Brother 17, and she managed to rack up four HOHs and three vetoes during her stay. Vanessa was ridiculously good at competitions, but what made her so elite was her strategic mind. Vanessa is definitely one of the greatest strategic thinkers in the show, and I'm not sure any Anybody else understands how to play into the game theory of the show as much as Vanessa does. Vanessa always considered all of her options and pretty much always landed on the correct move to make. And the fact that Vanessa was seen as a huge target starting from week two and was able to get away with what she did still has me scratching my head. Although not technically a backdoor, Vanessa was nominated at the veto ceremony in week seven with the intent to be sent home, but Vanessa somehow managed to survive unanimously, being the first player to survive a backdoor-esque attempt since Eric Stein in Big Brother 8. Vanessa had an uncanny ability to align with anybody, even players she had targeted the prior week because she was always able to convince players that they needed to work with her and any other option would be bad for their game. Vanessa being able to convince Julia to target Austin during the final six veto is still, to this day, one of the best on the spot moves of all time. Vanessa's biggest flaw was her social game. Not everyone loved Vanessa's personality, and a lot of her allies worked with her for strategic purposes only, but because of that very reason, it's one of the only times where a player could get away with a poor social game, because the strategic game was so dominant that it took over the need for the social game. Vanessa was one somewhat random question away from winning the final HOH, cutting Steve, and winning the whole thing. And even though she fell just short, she's one of the best fast-paced, high-risk, high-reward players that we've ever seen. And for that, she lands at the number nine spot. I'm Vanessa, I'm a professional poker player, and I live in Las Vegas. I studied game theory, the study of strategic decision-making. Being a game theorist is gonna be a huge advantage. I have to take another fat and blood again. Here we go. Vanessa's bloodbath continues. Like, how can that mean more than $500,000? Let me tell you, you must have some golden ass, is all I can say. Vanessa, please take a seat. I feel that you're so influential, and you can spin amazing deals, make plans, influence HOH moves. If people needed you most, you drop them like that if it did not benefit your game. If she wants to take it out and target me personally, she's doing it to the wrong person because I still have plays to make, so by no means count me out. If she won, she was 100% putting you up. 100% you were her target. I'm telling you, James, every conversation you guys had up there, she would go into this little room and she was telling everything to Shelly and Clay. By a vote of eight to zero, Vanessa, you are safe. Uh-huh. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. Oh, yeah. Another one of these. Julia, who would you like to challenge in the next Bowl Arena match? Wow. Uh, I would like to challenge Austin. <laughs> the worst thing that could happen for my game would be for Julia to win the veto and use it to take Liz off the block, because then that only leaves Johnny McElroy to go up as replacement nominee. You know, I listened to Vanessa at the last minute. She told me to trust her, and I did. I don't understand what's gonna happen now, right? I'm going on a walk. Exactly. Was that not your worst case scenario? I don't know what else I need to do. Like, I'm a game theory expert. I'm I telling know, you, but you wouldn't have done it even if he said he would have. And if you believe that, fine. Man, the twins are coming at me like I played them. I have to defuse the situation right away. I was looking at for you guys. You guys, this is brutal for me. I'm really sorry, but I came here to play a game, and it's a game decision. I'm sorry, Austin. I vote to evict you. I've got maybe another hour in me if I'm lucky. It's time for some psychological warfare. All right, 10 hours. I'm telling you, I'm not letting go of it. You want to ruin yourself for round two, you stick around. But I'm not falling off this. Thank you, Liz. <laughs> I can't believe it. I just won round one of the final HOH of the summer. Vanessa, across 17 seasons of this game, I am thoroughly convinced that you are the strongest female player this game has ever seen. Your strategy has been beyond brilliant. You're such a talker, you're so charismatic. I have, I have to vote to evict you. It's official, Vanessa. You are the last person to be evicted from the Big Brother house. 
For the next three players that also coincidentally round out this list, I had the hardest time deciding between all three of them. They have very similar stats, yet very different games. And I've switched around the rankings for these three players so often that at this point, it's basically like I'm ranking them as number six, number 6.1, and number 6.2. But at the end of the day, that's a cop-out. So at the number eight spot, I've decided to go with Tyler Crispin. Tyler's played Big Brother twice, placing second on Big Brother 20 and placing sixth on Big Brother 22, and Tyler has racked up five HOHs and five vetoes across his two seasons. Obviously, Tyler is a beast in competitions, but his gameplay tops that by far. In the first two-thirds of Big Brother 20, Tyler utilized the power of the blind side better than anyone ever has in the history of Big Brother, keeping the Fauté side of the house in complete confusion and distrusting each other all season long. Tyler also showcased one of the most impressive social games that we've ever seen before. Basically, everyone wanted to work with Tyler, and he knew it, and he used that to his advantage to gain information from all sides of the house, which led to him being the only person who knew where all three power apps lied and having 90% of the house thinking that he was on their side. Going into the final seven, Tyler basically had a final two with every single person left, and they were all so loyal to him to the point where it didn't matter how the endgame competitions played out, because Tyler was all but guaranteed a spot in the final two. Unfortunately for him, he just wasn't able to scrape up that one last jury vote he would need to win, and he lost in a vote of 5-4 to four to Casey. On Tyler's return in Big Brother 22, we saw him land a spot in the Majority Alliance, as well as having another plethora of final twos at his disposal. However, as soon as Tyler was in a position to snag the house control from Cody, Tyler realized he was probably in it for the long haul, questioned if his head was really in the game, and wanted to quit, which not only ended up being a bit icky, but also completely halted the momentum Tyler was gaining and locked up that Enzo would remain in Cody's corner. From there, Tyler did get his head back in the game and was able to survive a tight eviction night vote due to the loyalty from his alliance, and he was able to win some comps to maneuver certain weeks in his favor, but Tyler trying to quit ended up coming back to bite him as he was not able to flip Enzo with the final eight to try and evict Nicole, which put Tyler on the obvious outs, and he was eventually evicted in sixth place. Overall, Tyler is a top tier competitor, a top five social player of all time. He's finished in second and sixth in his two appearances, and is definitely one of the greatest to never win. But him showing a bit of weakness and wanting to quit the game in All Stars 2 when he was in one of the best positions in the house is what made me put him below the next two players and end up in the number eight spot. But the number eight spot is still a really good placement nonetheless. I'm Tyler. I'm a beach lifeguard from Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. Oh my god, that, nothing could be more perfect. My target, Steve, is out of the house and I got zero blood on my hand. I suggest to Swaggy and Fess that a power was used to send Steve home because I need to protect Caitlyn in this moment. I need to make sure nobody finds out that Caitlyn was that seventh vote. Are you... Do you want to make like a big movie yeah. pick or do you want to just no, say? No, I feel like that would, that would be really like a cool thing for my game. That'd be the coolest thing. Yeah, let's do that. that. Let's do that. Yeah. So I got the veto. I'm stoked. But on the other hand, I'm not that stoked because so far in the game, I'm kind of like running things. But I just don't want anybody else knowing that. So I know that Brett is Bailey's target this week. But I totally feel like it's best for my game if we keep Brett. And if that means... There's a little surprise for Bailey on eviction night, then I'll just have to cover my tracks when it comes to it. So there's a lot of people in this game that think I'm loyal to them. We got Casey, Angela, Brett, JC, Sam, Fessy, and Haley. And I have to deal with every single one of them. I need people feeling confident because then they're going to want to keep me in the game. That's why I have all these final twos. I'm in some sort of deal with every single person in this house, so I'm pretty much good with anybody but me winning this thing. <laughs> I had JC as my shield for the other side of the house, I had Casey within level 6 to keep me safe, and I had Sam as the wild card. Congratulations Casey, you are the winner! When I first got here, I did not want to be like jumping into a million different alliances, but this big brother, I think we gotta look out for each other. Yeah, oh, definitely. I got you 100%. When people come up to you with a deal, you don't say no. I want to talk to you. I think we can do something really incredible. Oh, you got it. You ready to ride this out? Let's do it. Let's do it. Me, you. Could be into that. I guess I have a deal with pretty much everybody. By a vote of five to three, Ian, you are evicted. Like, I've heard way too many times, David's not a threat, David's not a threat. I'm like, kid's gotta go. 
I get why Memphis wants David out, kinda, but that is not good for my game. He's by himself. Do you want to put on Nicole? That's what I can do right now. I vote to evict Nicole. I vote to evict David. Enzo did not come through. If you take a shot in this game and you miss, not good. By a vote of three to zero, Tyler, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. So I had this player at number six originally, then moved them down to number eight afterwards, and finally decided to land them right in the middle. So at the number seven spot, I have Paul Abrahamian. Paul has played Big Brother twice, placing second on Big Brother 18, and then also placing second on Big Brother 19. Paul has racked up a ridiculous six HOHs and eight vetoes throughout their two seasons. One thing that made Paul such an impressive player is that they had never seen the show before playing on pretty much both of their seasons, and yet they still managed to make it to the end both times. In Big Brother 18, Paul had such a high ceiling with the social bonds that they were able to create, being able to work with basically everyone and knowing the right time to dip on certain aspects. Allies. And it's impressive that they started the game basically on the bottom and worked their way to the top, but sometimes they were a little too abrasive and that pushed certain people away. They were admittedly outmaneuvered in the endgame by Nicole and were greatly benefited by Victor returning twice, but they still managed to enter the final three with both players taking them to the end, one of which was a winning scenario, and at the end of the day, Paul still managed to get second place and come just a single vote away from winning. Their Big Brother 18 game was good, but not great, but everyone knows that what makes Paul a true contender for the single greatest player to never win was their Big Brother 19 game. Being the sole returning player, Paul ran the house guests like nobody had ever seen before. Although helped by a twist in the beginning that kept them safe for a few weeks, Paul dominated and rallied a cult behind them that made it so no matter who won power, who was nominated, or any other potential shenanigans ensuing, Paul would never, ever be evicted. Paul tactically set up the mid game such that they were surrounded by three sets of pairs and Paul would then strategically take out a member of certain pairs and take their place as the surviving players number one, putting them in an end game where everyone thought that Paul was their ride or die, paving the way for a dominant victory. Paul had such influence and control over every person in the house that they literally got every single person to throw the final seven HOH to Christmas, which was made so comical due to the fact that it was a sprinting competition and Christmas had a broken foot. Paul's control was unmatched. However, Paul's fatal flaw continued to be their jury management. After losing the prior season, Paul did take a more aggressive approach on jury management, but they did it all wrong. They would secretly betray basically everyone on the season, but would lie in their goodbye messages and say that they were loyal to the end. But of course, people in the jury house compared notes and come the final two, five of the jurors made a pact to ensure that Paul lost, leading to a second straight five to four jury vote in the favor of Paul's opponent. This made them the only two-time final two loser in the history of Big Brother. Ending in a loss for a second straight year only emphasized the severity of Paul's fatal flaw, but their Big Brother 19 game is possibly the single greatest fully dominant game ever, and being tied for first in the all-time comp record, having never been evicted across two seasons of Big Brother, going kind of unnominated all of Big Brother 19, and all of this while never really watching the show before is more than enough to place Paul at the number seven spot. I'm Paul, and I play in a rock band. Rock and roll, dude! I look to my left, and I see Paul. He's actually stacking blocks on top of this contraption that he has pounded in. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> What's up? <laughs> What's up? What? When are you going to tell me? Tell you what? What James is planning on doing. What is James planning on doing? You know what James is planning on doing? No, I don't. So apparently, Paulie finds out about our plan to get rid of Zakia. Come on, pal. It's a PP. It's friendship. I'd never do that to you. I never knew. Congratulations, Paul. Yes! You're the new HOH. Good job, buddy. Ah! Congrats. Yes! Congrats. Oh, my God. <laughs> ah! It's just been such a wild season, man. And uh, I've had it tough since day one. Six times on the block, getting myself in and out of situations, talking my way through things. To see it all pay off like this is just crazy. The two times that I seriously needed to save myself, I won the veto and pulled myself off the block. The rest, I teamed up with the right people at the right time to always make sure there was a bigger target in the house. And I told you guys I'd break some rules, but there's one rule that I'll never break. And that's rule number one, friendship. <laughs> 
Congratulations, Nicole. You are the winner. Sorry I'm late. Last week, Cody left everyone in the dark and it really upset everybody. So, I'm gonna do the complete opposite. No secrets, no BS, nothing to hide, just a solid strategy. I'm not quite sure if Christmas even knows the answer to this, so before she botches it and answers incorrectly, I'm gonna go ahead and answer Cameron because he wasn't even here. I'm sorry, Paul. That's wrong. Christmas, congratulations. You are the new head of household. So I've kind of taken a step back and realized that there's three power duos in the house, and I gotta attach myself to each power couple. It's a team effort, dude. I said that from day one. I'm becoming the third with each pair so that they can rely on me towards the end of the game. If the power duos are taking shots at each other, then naturally I'm just gonna fill in the spot of whoever they take a shot at. It's absolutely mind blowing to me how these people just take the bait I leave out there and run with it. Now Jason's a huge target, Kevin's a huge target. There's so many targets out there and not one of them is me. <laughs> Okay. You feel me? Okay. Are you doing it for Trejo? Big style Trejo. Now that all my puppets have pretty much danced their way out of this competition, it's time for the puppet master to bow out of the show. Christmas is the new head of households! <laughs> I literally can't believe that I pulled that off. I pretty much got the one-legged girl to win a foot race. I don't even have to make a joke. We have four votes for Paul, four votes for Josh. Congratulations, Josh. You are the winner of Big Brother. Paul, a bridesmaid once again. You orchestrated every person's eviction, essentially. How did you come up short? I don't know. I didn't watch. <laughs> I have no idea how I came up short. I did everything that I could. If people didn't see that I had to fight my way through to make it to the end, then that's, that's on them. After a lot of back and forth, it occurred to me that it just wouldn't feel right placing this player behind Tyler and Paul. One of the first legends of the game, fans to this day are still clamoring for her to return. So rounding out this list and at the number six spot, I have Danielle Reyes. Danielle played on two seasons of Big Brother, where she placed second on Big Brother 3 and placed sixth on Big Brother 7. And through her two appearances, Danielle has racked up two HOHs and two vetoes. Danielle Reyes revolutionized the game. With basically no blueprints to work off of, Danielle came into Big Brother 3 and pretty much right off the rip formed a truly secret alliance with fellow house guest Jason. And from there, they ran things from behind the scenes. Danielle was an unbelievable social player. And one of her greatest strengths was her ability to tactically go to members on one side of the house and plant the seeds for them to go after the other side of the house, causing warfare between the visible sides while she took no heat and instead reaped the rewards. She capitalized on little tiffs between players and used those two real players into her corner, creating a small army that was always going to be one step ahead of the opposition. Danielle also had the cutthroat mindset that even some of the greatest players struggle with. Tyler threw the final four veto in Big Brother 20 because he couldn't bear the weight of having to cut either Angela or Casey, whereas Danielle was strong enough to take advantage of Marcellus his kindness, telling him that he didn't need to use the veto on himself when he was on the block, to which he then complied and got evicted by Danielle. Danielle's biggest and game-losing mistake was keeping Lisa over Amy at the final four, but even still, it put her in a spot where she would be taken to the final two no matter what. She made it all the way to the final three without ever being nominated and was then taken to the final two by Lisa. Unfortunately, the jurors got to watch the entire game play out from home, and a lot of the jurors did not respect some of the things Danielle said about them in the diary room, so Danielle ended up losing in a vote of 9-1, to one, only getting Jason's vote. Even though Danielle probably loses even if the jury was sequestered, the outrage and dissatisfaction from the general public that the season ended with such a blowout loss for Danielle caused the producers to implement a sequestered jury house from there on out, which we still have today. Danielle is the reason that the jurors are sequestered. Then, after her amazing game on Big Brother 3, Danielle was brought back for Big Brother All-Stars. On this return, after going all of Big Brother 3 without being nominated, she had to switch gears real fast as she was put on the block week one. But she survived, and then she fought back. 
She was the first person to take power away from the Season 6 Alliance, and Danielle didn't toy around with her nominations, nominating three out of the four Season 6ers and sending home Kaser. She formed a dream alliance consisting of herself, James Ryan, and Chilltown, and that directly helped her survive being a target in Week 6 after Janelle won the HOH. Unfortunately, Janelle's dominance and competitions played a major factor in Chilltown switching their allegiance from Danielle's alliance over to Janelle, and they sent home Danielle's number one ally, James, at the final seven. Then, at the final six, Janelle won the veto, and Chilltown was successfully able to convince Erica to keep them safe, leaving no other option but for her to nominate Danielle, where she was then evicted for the first time in her career at sixth place. But even still, I don't think this should be a huge knock to Danielle as a player, when it takes literally the best competitor and the best strategist in the history of the show up to that point, working together to get you out of the house, it should be a clear indicator that Danielle was a gigantic threat, one of the greatest to ever do it, and could only be evicted by some of the greatest players to ever play the game. She walked into the All-Star house as one of the biggest threats on the board due to playing one of the best games of all time in Big Brother 3, and she still managed to make it to sixth place. So, Danielle Reyes, the best player to never win, lands at the number six spot. I'm Danielle. Classy, sassy diva. Just ask my family. My strategy in playing this game is to pick only one person, and that's Jason. And that's it, that's all. It's a secret. Why? Because people get nervous when they know there's alliances. I need cards. I think it's already like that. I went up to Kiara and tried to insinuate that thank you for voting and, and changing your mind to keep Lisa when I know good and well she didn't. And I'm glad you changed your mind on the vote. So I got Kiara's number and um, in due time, Kiara, in due time. Who's, who's gonna win? Everybody's like, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say anything. Y'all know I'm gonna win. <laughs> Everybody but Jay, it's been said to me from for weeks now that you want to get me out of this house. Not true. Yeah, I said that. I said that exactly. And only Marcellus is the one that said that. He told Roddy my plan. You don't mess with me. Congratulations, Marcellus. You have the golden veto. Dang, that fool, <laughs> that fool wants to stay in the house. I'm really going to work so hard to convince Marcellus not to use the power of veto. My family comes first. I will take people out that I love dearly just so I can win the money. I am gonna do the art of manipulation. Whoever you wanna do, Amy's going. If Marcellus does not use the golden veto and he is still on the chopping block, I'm afraid Marcellus will leave, big brother. I'm not gonna use it. I don't want you to have to decide between them. I don't want you guys to go through the moment that I went through this week. I vote to evict Marcellus. Danielle, congratulations. You won by one That's point. Right. Oh That's right. Right. If there was any time to win HOH, Danielle, this would be the time. I voted for Danielle. <laughs> congratulations, Lisa, by a vote of nine to one. You are the winner of Big Brother 3. Would you still do it all over again, the way you think? I would do it exactly the same. People said, I'm the smartest player to not ever win the game. And uh, yeah, here I am sitting nominated, so. I've never been nominated before. This is all new to me. Yeah. You all right, Mama? Oh, my mind's. There come out. No, I'm not. <laughs> oh, 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 God, and I went, no, I'm not. And. I just put that leg back up, then I'm like, I'm not going anywhere. Oh, I'm a black widow! Ah! Me. The black widow is back. I have a web of deception. I'm ready to catch a whole bunch of houseflies. All bets are off because this is the new four. James, myself, and you two. Legion of Doom. Bum, bum, bum. Great job. Thank you. Uh, Janelle, maybe when you start a war, you better complete it. Well, the house is mine. Kiss will go back, because I'm getting rid of him as soon as I can. He has to go. By a vote of three to zero, Danielle, you have been evicted from the Big Brother All-Star House.
You are the best player to have never won Big Brother, hands down. <laughs> Starting out the top five, we have someone that many are probably expecting, while another group of viewers will probably be shocked to see. Although recently they've gotten a lot more credit, overall their game is pretty misunderstood. So at the number five spot, I have Andy Heron. Andy has played on one season of Big Brother, where he was crowned the winner of Big Brother 15, and Andy managed to win three HOHs and two vetoes. Probably the most underappreciated winner of all time, some people think Andy is a bad winner. And to that, I say, there's absolutely no way. Maybe it's because he was super under-edited on the show, especially in the first half of the season, but there are so many nuances to Andy's game that make him such an exceptional player. Andy is a walking wolf in sheep's clothing, as he purposely brought cute little shirts with hearts on them to make him look unthreatening, opening the door for him to play ruthless without being suspected by the other house guests. He perfectly worked both of the power sides of the house, forming a very tight bond with Helen, which kept him safe from Alyssa's MVP powers, and being very closely aligned with Amanda and McRae, who were the visible power couple dominating the game. Being aligned with both sides of the house not only kept Andy safe throughout the first half of the game, but also gave Andy absurd amounts of information, which he was then able to use when determining his next steps in the game. When Andy won HOH in week 7, it became apparent just how good Andy had been doing socially in the house, as there was a fun segment on the episode showing every single player expressing excitement with Andy winning HOH and about how they felt safe with him. Eventually, Andy jumped shit to the Amanda McRae and Aaron side due to their overwhelming competition dominance, but then afterwards, Andy realized just just how powerful McCranda was getting, and he jumped ship once more to a final alliance, the Exterminators, consisting of some leftovers in the house with the goal being to eliminate McCranda. Andy then pulled off a wild bluff where he pinned his vote to evict Amanda on Alyssa, and even if McCray was able to figure out that it was Andy that was lying, McCray won the next HOH and targeted Alyssa over Andy, so it didn't even matter, and McCray likely doesn't feel forced to do that if Andy and his alliance weren't so adamant about it all. From there, it was a walk in the park for Andy. Andy, as he was at the top of the totem pole in his alliance, and he completely won out from the final four. In the end, Andy had an exceptional jury questioning segment and was easily able to take home the crown over Gina Marie. Fans and players alike have called Andy's game very rat-like. But hey, taking information from all sides of the house and then feeding it tactically in order to be in the middle of two warring sides before forming your own alliance of outsider players with the goal being to pick off the remaining power players and easily waltz your way to $500,000 seemed to be a really effective strategy and I would happily play the exact same way if it meant getting that fat of a paycheck. Andy's a very sneaky winner, and he lands at the number five spot. I'm really good at lying. I teach my students how to do it. I can lie to someone's face with a gigantic smile on my face, and they will never see it coming. And so winning HOH is so crucial because number one, you can be the person to make those moves, and number two, you cannot be a victim of one of those moves. I feel cool with Andy winning this HOH. I'm really happy that Andy won HOH. We're really good friends. Andy and I jive very well together. I feel more than comfortable that Andy won HOH. This could be the best possible scenario. He's my closest ally in the house. He's in a final three alliance with me, McCray, and himself. Helen thinks I'm 100% loyal to her, and Amanda and McCray think I'm 100% loyal to them. My dilemma is, do I choose a side at this point, or do I keep playing them both and play it safe? If Helen gets wind that I am more Team Amanda and McCray than I am Team Helen, I am gonna be in trouble. I win the veto, Ooh. and it could not be any better. I've proven that, like, I'm a force to be reckoned with in competitions. Amanda's behavior towards Alyssa is really, really appalling. And furthermore, it makes me so uncomfortable that if I can get through this game with someone who isn't as awful, I would really like to do so. I have a much better shot with you guys than I do with a couple. And that's why I feel like at this point, we just cut the ties and we move forward together. Yeah, I'm down with it. I'm really hoping that the exterminators have my back and they vote to get rid of Aaron and keep me. Basically, the whole house is against Amanda and McCray, but they have absolutely no idea about it. I've been Mr. Nice Guy in this house for a very long time, and now that 3 a.m. has been dismantled, I need to move forward with the exterminators and show them that I'm loyal. She said she was going to eat me. I am not to eat you. <laughs> what the hell is happening? I've worked so hard all summer to ensure that I keep both sides at bay, and this is gonna out me. I vote to exterminate, ugh, I mean evict, Amanda. Now the big hurdle is that McCray is gonna know that either myself or Alyssa has lied. I've got a hard road ahead of me, but the good thing is I've got all of my fellow exterminators who are there to help me frame her. And it is my mission to make him believe 100% that I have never faltered from my alliance with him and that I should be trusted over Alyssa. 
even though I should definitely not be trusted whatsoever. Oh, I'm not an idiot, McCray. Don't be stupid. When McCray nominates Alyssa, I am so relieved. I made the riskiest move I have made all game by voting Amanda out and lying to McCray. It's worked out and it seems like everything is going exactly as I planned it. Every day I would lay in bed and think to myself, what can I do to make sure I am not a target next week? And I think that I accomplished that. I don't think I was ever in danger in this house. Everywhere I went in this game, people went home because of me and because of what I was doing and because of how I was playing both sides and every move that I made was expertly calculated. And I love all of you and I respect whatever decision you make, but I will really respect your decision if you vote for me to win because Thank I think you, I deserve Andy. to. Congratulations, Andy. You are the winner of Big Brother. Up next is probably another player that many will say I have way too high. But I think there's more than enough justification to put this player in the top five. At the number four spot, I have Cody Calafiore. Cody has played Big Brother twice, placing second in Big Brother 16 and being crowned the winner of Big Brother 22. Through Cody's two appearances, he has racked up a truly absurd seven HOHs in seven vetoes, which ties him for the all-time comp record. Oftentimes, I think Big Brother fans, including myself, put too much of an emphasis on the strategic game and fall into the trap of, well, if this person isn't the greatest strategist in the world, they can't be an elite level player. Sometimes I need to take a step back to realize that there are two other pillars to the game that are just as important when it comes to actually winning, and Cody is masterful at both of those aspects. Like I mentioned, Cody is ridiculously good at competitions, but his social game is freaking slept on. He is the only person in Big Brother 16 other than Derek that survives the block next to Victoria. He had ties with pretty much everyone on both of his seasons, and because of this, he never had a single eviction vote cast against him ever. Also, strategically, he's not bad. Although he may have made some questionable strategic moves without Derek's intervention in Big Brother 16, he learned from those and came into Big Brother 22 a much better strategic player, making him one of the only truly lethal triple threats in the show's history. One thing many fans clamor to is the fact that Cody was carried by Derek in Big Brother 16, and while I agree that Derek definitely was the top dog and more crucial to the Hitman's success, Cody's social game without a doubt set up the Hitman to succeed in the long run, and without Cody, Derek has a much tougher road to the end. Remember, Cody was the one to take out both Frankie and Caleb, two competitive beasts that stood in the way of the hitmen making it to the end. And overall, I'd say that Cody was at a minimum the third best player on season 16, and that's a good argument for second best. Obviously, the reason that Cody is so high, though, is his Big Brother 22 game. Basically, right off the get-go, Cody had a stranglehold on the house, and he never let it go. He dominated the comps, he dominated the social game, and he dominated the strategy. He had players like Danny, Nicole, and Enzo so freaking loyal to him that they would make moves that were strictly bad for their game in order to go with Cody's wishes. It was not good for Nicole or Danny to keep Tyler over Ian in week six, and they had the power to get Tyler out, yet they didn't, so as not to go against Cody. And then when you look at the final three, both Nicole and Enzo knew that they would lose to Cody if they sat next to him in the final two, yet they both willingly would have taken him to the end and lost. He is also the only person to play a truly perfect game. He had a perfect voting record, he didn't touch the block a single time all season long, and he won unanimously. He definitely made mistakes in Big Brother 16, like taking Derek to the end, but he learned from and then fixed his mistakes on his return and evolved his good game in Big Brother 16 into a perfect game in Big Brother 22. Although he hasn't really faced much adversity either of his seasons, I really don't think it's that hard to imagine Cody just winning a comp or using his social bonds to get out of a sticky situation. Out of all the players in the show, I would probably bet on Cody to make it far and win the game more often than anyone else because he is like the prototypical perfect Big Brother player. He's number one in total comp wins. He's number one in average placements for multi-time players. He's never been evicted. Hell, he's never even had a vote cast against him. And he's the type of player that could come back a third time and still find a way to make it to the end. He's my number four ranked player of all time. I really think that going into those physical challenges, stamina, strength, I think it's really gonna help. Yeah. I don't know if she's into me or not, but obviously it's popped onto Caleb's radar. With this kid's ego, he'll come after me just out of spite. No, he's not staying on the ball. No, he has to come off. Now we can really talk. Yeah. What's your opinion? I, I, I wanna get him out. Yeah, baby. Let's go! Yeah, baby! So I went head of household and it feels amazing. 
so pumped to finally get another HOH in, my second one of the summer. So I'm glad everyone played this game extra soft and handed me this Golden Power Veto on a silver platter. And I get to watch this new show called Scorpion. It doesn't get any better than this. I want to use a veto and put up Frankie. We could get him out. The three numbers that we need are you, the person that's coming down, and Victoria. I don't want to be that guy that misses a chance to take a shot at a huge player and then the next week be the one sitting on the block looking at eviction. Caleb's nervous that if he puts Frankie up, then Frankie's going to come after him next week. Newsflash, Caleb, the Final Four's next week. Now, did we say he would do that? No. Oh, absolutely not. Dude, shut your mouth. This is Big Brother. If you want to make a move, you don't go run and tell the person right after you do it. Dude. It's got to be Frankie. Thank you. Seconds. Wow, look at you. <laughs> Huge move. I just won the biggest comp of the summer so far. We're keeping the noms the same, and we're sending that boy out of the house. You know, hearing that I was viewed as the puppet, that hit me a little bit in the heart. I kind of played this game, gained the trust of about nine of the jury members there, and heard information from just about all of you. The puppet that sends a beast Caleb out, a beast Frankie, and a beast Donnie out, and then brings us to the final two. In my book, that's no puppet in any play. Congratulations, Derek. You are the winner of Big Brother. In season 16, you and Derek were in perfect sync. Yeah. The two of you made it to the end. Yeah. What do you think it's going to be like to play without him? Very, very difficult. If you want to win, you need people around you that you're not ready to cross, but like would take the fall before you. Hey, Memphis, if you want to be the one to go talk to people, go ahead, because like if the truth has to come out, it was Memphis grabbed all these people. Not me. I would like to keep all of my Alliance members that have been keeping me safe off the block, show my loyalty to them, so that moving forward in this game, I can stay off the block. Cody, with a score of two, is the new head of household. I nominated Christmas and Tyler because these two were clearly working together to try to flip the vote and then just play dumb to me when I brought it up to them. There are only three options for a replacement nominee at this point, and I have a final two with all of them. So for me, it is so crucial that my nominations stay the same. I'm gonna get my loafers on and I'll be ready to party. Memphis is telling me all this nonsense about what Christmas was trying to plan this week, but what he doesn't know is that Nicole told me that he tried to get in on the backdoor plan as well. Bro, I was gonna be nowhere near the block this week. Dude, I'm decades ahead of you in this game, bro. Like decades. I'm playing a whole nother season, but like right now, you're still in the first one. Yeah, you ready to take this to the end? Yeah. Are you ready to see the jury house? Hope you enjoy that. I also never sat on the block, not one time this season. Not on this night, not on any other night of this game. I had three of my final twos in the final five. And so for me, being an ally of mine, I felt like was a crucial aspect of this game. And so for me, I feel like I played a full, well-rounded game, way different than the first time. I feel like I'm so much more deserving of the $500,000 than I was the first time I played. Congratulations, Cody. You are the winner of Big Brother All-Stars. This next player was tricky because I really considered putting them higher, but at the end of the day, they have one thing holding them back, no second appearance. So at the number three spot, I have Derek Lavasser. Derek has played Big Brother just once where he was crowned the winner of Big Brother 16 and he won a total of four HOHs, although one of his HOHs was dethroned and he actually never won a veto. Derek is this high because, in my opinion, his one time playing is the single greatest winning game of all time. Derek was aligned with everyone. Derek was able to connect with everyone during the season, and due to his social prowess and taking the time to reach out to literally everybody, he was brought into basically every alliance all season long. Derek had his obvious final two with Cody, which was the main course for the season, but Derek taking the time to slowly build the relationship with Victoria, who was constantly on an island of her own, proved to be great for his game, as it gave him a soul number that nobody else had all throughout the season, and it put Derek in a spot where both Cody and Victoria accompanied him into the final three, and each of them were going to take him to the end if given the chance. Another really great thing about Derek's game that I never hear people talk about was his spectacular timing of when he won competitions. Obviously, Derek often threw comps he didn't need to win to avoid showing his cards and getting unnecessary blood on his hands, but the competitions he did choose to win served such a great purpose for him. It made him look like a team player while he was actually just doing the obvious thing that would appease everyone. Week three? Sure, Derek went out and won the HOH to send home Devin. 
the obvious house target. Final six, sure, Derek went out and won the HOH to send home Christine, the player who had been starting to sketch everyone out and was an easy target at the time. Derek won tactically so as to appear that he was pulling his weight in the alliance while in actuality, he wasn't making any hard decisions and he just did what anyone else would have done had they won HOH, which meant that the other players in his alliance would have to be the ones making the hard moves with the repercussions. Strategically, Derek did so well in the game because his arguments always made sense. He survived two final fives without touching the block because he was able to go to each HOH and give them legitimate and easy to follow reasons as to why he shouldn't be nominated. I mean, hell, he survived the whole season without touching the block because of how he approached each individual HOH. The fact that Derek was never nominated in a season with four nominees each week, totaling up to 54 nominations, is absurdly impressive and is a record that will never ever be broken. And guess what? Even if he was ever nominated, he was never going to go home. Derek had way too many numbers following him that were far too loyal to ever vote him out. And that is extremely impressive. Overall, Derek was just really good at the game. He never made a move too early, and that's a huge reason as to why he never had to face any consequences for the moves that he made. He always kept ties with the outsiders in the house, which came in handy on more than one occasion, and he was so good at giving easy-to-follow reasons as to why he shouldn't be the target and why someone else should, and that helped carry him all the way to the final two, where he easily won over Cody. I've been saying this a lot, but he's probably one of, if not the best strategist on the show. He's the most impressive one-time player in my opinion, and the only thing holding him back from placing higher is the fact that he hasn't proven to be able to do it again. I worked undercover narcotics for three years. Because of the things I've seen, there's nothing in the house that's gonna throw me off my game. Here it is, baby, HOH key. Me too on this one, dude. As far as I'm concerned, the bomb squad is over. With that being said, we're still gonna kind of work together as a crew because in this game, it's crucial to have the numbers and right now we have them. Put up Donnie. Donnie's the obvious choice as a pawn this week. He's not in our alliance and everyone likes him so it ensures that Brittany's gonna go home. Come on, Cody, this is an easy one. It's a layup. After talking to Caleb, he brought up this point about numbers and as crazy as it sounds, he's really got me thinking. Why would I get rid of somebody who's a vote for me in my alliance. Zach might be a snake, but he's my snake. Yes, they need us to vote them out, so we're gonna even out the numbers for them. We're looking like fools. Okay, so you want us to keep Zach? I think we should. So I did feel betrayed completely. Because Zach told you? How can I turn this negative situation into a positive situation? Zach, I gotta talk to you. We, are, we can do it right now, because it's going on up here right now. Obviously, you know how I've been playing this game. I've been pretty straight up. You're one of my closer friends in the house. I trust you. You told me something. She can easily go spread that to other people so I can front her on it. I just want to know what's going on because I'm I lied to you and told you that she said it just in case if she told you that you would think it would come from her and not come from me. I respect you for telling the truth. Gonna get around. Okay. So mission accomplished. Right now, Everyone in the house knows Zach's a liar, and Nicole loves me right now because I just made her look good to the house. Victoria thinks everything's her fault, and she betrayed my trust. It's a win, win, win. Dude, dude, we're not, we're we not, did. We, we actually need to look scored. like jackasses because we went too nuts. Cody, you won. I was like, yeah, yeah. I look like a fool. Everything you do has a reason, and it's strategic. You're the closest thing to Dan that I've ever came across. <laughs> yeah, we'll keep that one. No, I'm being honest. Whoa, Nicole, can you, can you do me a favor? Keep that down a little bit? Being compared to Dan Giesling is the ultimate compliment. Which means the answer is false. The bleep that word, as you heard, was kisses, and it also means a big congratulations to Derek. You are the new head of household. I mean, like, you've never been on the block. I know, but that would be, I mean, if you put me on the, because you've I never know, been on the block, I, know, I want you to I feel know. it. Cody and I are the hitmen, and I don't want to see him go on the block. That being said, I have to look out for my game over anybody else's. I think all three of you like each other, but I think you all see each other as a threat. The intent of this conversation is simple. I have to put doubt in Frankie's mind that if he took Caleb or Cody to the final two, it'd be tough for him to beat them. And I'm not even gonna mention my name at all. All right, take notes, America. This is how I'm about to steal Caleb from Frankie. One, I'm gonna build up Caleb's ego a little bit more. You've played a better game than me. Yeah. One down. Two, let him know that I'm a terrible player. Like, I'm not viewed as a threat because I'm not a, viewed as one of the big competitors in the house. Right. I think any one of you would beat me. Three, although he's a beast, there are a couple other people, beside myself of course, 
that could potentially beat him. You, Frankie, you, Cody, that's a title fight. Yeah. But you don't see many title fights in here because people aren't stupid. I'm telling you now, if you're in there and I win the final HOH and you're one of the three, I am taking it. And that, people, is how you win $500,000. I'll see you at the finale. Victoria and I are close, and with her possibly leaving this week, everyone remaining in the house knows that's one assured vote that I have in the jury house. If people think I even have one 100% jury vote, they're not gonna wanna take me to the final two. I could tell them, like I told Victoria, I'm not gonna vote for her. You could legit be pissed at me. No way I'm voting for her. There may be people in this house that think Victoria is useless, but before she leaves this house, she's gonna be extremely beneficial to my game. And she pissed at me. She feels more hurt than anyone else. He totally bought it. Correct. That's good. That's awesome. And I have to nominate one of you. I go off math. That's how I do it. If you put one of us up and he wins the veto, he can send one of us home and there's nothing you can do. How? Because if you don't put him up, he could win the veto, take Victoria off, and you have to put the other one of us up. You guys know I came in here to play the best social game that I could play, and I think I accomplished that. Like I said, through all the nominations, my key was never removed from that memory wall, not once. And in addition to that, I still was able to win four H -H HOHs, and that's why I think I deserve to be the next winner of Big Brother. Congratulations, Derek. You are the winner of Big Brother. Gentlemen. Oh. You know, I really didn't think I was going to place this player so high. They have some flaws in their play style, their winning game isn't really the most extraordinary, and the reason as to why they were eventually voted out was entirely their own fault. But after looking through everything, this player is such a magician and an outlier that I could not possibly justify placing him below anyone we just talked about. So at the number two spot, I have Dr. Will Kirby. Dr. Will has played on two seasons of Big Brother where he was crowned the winner of Big Brother 2 and placed fourth on Big Brother 7. And overall, Dr. Will has a total of zero comp wins of any kind. No HOHs, no vetoes, nothing. And that's what makes Dr. Will so damn brilliant. Dr. Will played on the very first season of Big Brother that introduced the head of household. And what did he decide to do? Well, he decided to go against the grain and think outside the box as he deduced that winning the HOHs would be a disadvantage to his game. So Dr. Will purposely lost every single HOH and it worked. The players that did well in the HOHs but didn't win were often nominated and evicted. And due to this, Will was never the number one target going into any week. After a bit of a shaky start due to being in the loud and proud chill talent alliance that annoyed the rest of the house, Will was able to pick things back up and shine in the game once his two allies, Shannon and Boogie, were evicted. At the final five, he struck a deal with Nicole and Hardy that if they voted to keep him safe, he wouldn't nominate them both at the final four if he won the HOH. Of course, Will was then saved at the final five, and then at the final four HOH, he purposely threw it to Monica, knowing that she would keep him safe and nominate Nicole and Hardy for him. He knew when to make a deal, and then he knew how to break it without completely upsetting everyone. Will was then brought to the final two by Nicole, where he was just able to schmooze his way through the final two questions, and then still be awarded the win, being crowned the first winner of the show, Kind of, if you don't count Eddie. If I'm being super honest though, his winning game wasn't all that great. And I think in general, his Big Brother 2 game left a bit to be desired, but we were still able to see just how capable of a game player Will really was. And well, we got to see that game player come alive a few years later. Will came into All-Stars as probably the biggest threat on the board. He was the only winner in the house. He was in a very public alliance with Mike Boogie and he was known as the evil doctor. But what Will did was pretty shocking. He went in and he just whooped everyone's ass. In a house filled with the best players the show had ever seen before, Will was running circles around every last one of them. He constantly worked the middle, playing up to rivals Janelle and Danielle and secretly working with the other one every other week to make sure that they kept surviving each week and kept targeting each other. Will was always one step ahead of the next closest person. He'd manipulate the strongest players into sending home their close allies when they were the HOH, and he'd make sure to turn on his alliances one week earlier than they would turn on him, which always resulted in Will having the upper hand. And guess what? He did it without needing to win a single competition again. Everyone knew what a threat Will was, but nobody but he would take him out. Will even told every house guest that he hated them all and asked to be evicted in week three and not a single person voted against him. And that, that right there is one of the scariest things about Will and the reason why I put him so high on the list. He's never afraid of being nominated. In fact, 
He reveled in it. Will was basically like a higher power in the house, toying around with the other house guests, asking to be nominated just because he could, and if he ever was nominated, he'd just mess around and then end up staying because of course he knew he would stay. He made it look like he wasn't taking the game seriously and his success in the game looked effortless. And I need to emphasize how impressive this is because he was literally playing with the best of the best at this time. Will didn't play by the typical rules. He tested the limits of what was typical in the Big Brother house and he came dangerously close to winning the game a second time. Will was so close to winning, but he played around a bit too much at the end, secretly bringing both Janelle and Erica into Chilltown, which was unknowingly ammo for Erica to use once Janelle won the Final Four veto. Janelle then finally turned on the doctor and evicted him in fourth place, but if Will had played it a little bit safer and managed to make it to the Final Three, he would have been in a spot where both Boogie and Janelle would take him to the Final Two, and he would have destroyed them both, becoming the only two-time winner in the show. If he had pulled it off, maybe he would have taken the top spot. But hey, being ranked number two of all time in a game that he hasn't played in over 15 years is still quite the remarkable achievement. Every day I walk a fine line between confidence and being cocky. I hope that everyone has underestimated my potential for, um, for just massive destruction. <laughs> Will's got to be the leader, man. He's Attila the Hun. Tomorrow morning, um, I will be initiating a voluntary fast. I told everyone that I created the fast for spiritual cleansing, which was total BS. It puts me in a position of power, and if people are wondering what I think, then I have some ability to control them. I can be the puppeteer, and they can be the marionettes. Shannon, how you doing, uh, big brother? God, that sounds so dorky. I'm such a loser. It would be very easy for me to come in here and say that I have to win this head of household to compete, but losing head of household competitions can be very advantageous. Time and time again, it's been shown that if you do pretty well at the HOH competitions but don't win, you get ousted. Whereas if you lose them very quickly, such as the things that Monica and I have done, then you stay for a while. Nicole and I were having this long discussion and I explained to her that I know that she's in love with me. You think that I'm falling in love? with you. That's what I'm saying. He is a freak. At this point, it's no secret that Nicole is controlling this house. She's the den mother. She's the alpha female. She really runs things. I don't know who can save me in the house. There's very few people left. So I suspect that one, I'll be nominated, and two, I very well could be evicted this week. Will and nominated you. And I think Nicole's living in denial, and I'm not talking about that river in Egypt. Nicole, are you crazy? If you keep me in this house, of course I'm going to stab you in the back and nominate you and Hardy. Hopefully he took this one to heart. You know, I really try to teach everyone, and uh, they just won't pay attention. I tell them right to their face, I'm going to stab you in the back. I'm going to lie to you. That's what I've been doing. I'm going to continue to do it. And they look me right in the face, and they say, no, you won't. We trust you. You're a good guy. And uh, I burn them every time. If you give me your word that if you win HOH, you won't nominate both Nicole and I. We'll keep you here for another week. All right. I choose to be Vic Bunky. It's just, it's because it's strategy. Hey, you're taking it off my knee. Your hand was all the way off the thing. I'm sorry, that was my fault, but I totally saw it. I don't know how I'm going to sleep at night. The, the blame rests on my shoulders. <sighs> One of them's going home next week, mind you. <laughs> no, 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 no. I came into this house to gamble. Yeah, I was gambling about the prize, but what I was really gambling on is that Monica not nominating me. I hope she's not going to. If she doesn't, I will be the one vote this week. I made a deal with Will to let him stay, that if he won head of household, that uh, he wouldn't nominate both Nicole and myself. What does he do? He decides to throw it and take what's behind door number one. Three or four hours after the fact, uh, I'm definitely regretting letting Will stay here. So you're gonna finish up the series with the Dr. Evil thing, Will? Mm, yeah. Okay, evicted house guest. I can stand before you today and I can talk about apologies, I can talk about remorse, I can talk about regrets. That's just not me. I know some people out there are not happy with the way this show went down. It just might be yourself you're not happy with, so don't place all the blame of this on me. Everyone needs to look within themselves. You all need to learn to love each other and we need to all get along a lot better. On that note, I bid you a fond farewell and I look forward to seeing you all very soon. And I voted for you, baby. Congratulations. Yeah, baby. All right, I just have to make an official congratulations, Will. By a vote of five to do, you are the winner of Big Brother 2. My plan right now, if I last three weeks, I'm gonna pull the mask off. People aren't gonna like what they see. Looks gonna look like flesh on the outside. You rip it open and it's just circuitry and wires. They don't even know what's gonna hit them. You're gonna pick Danielle and Allison over me? I should be nominated. This is infuriating to me. I'm not happy with Jace at all. And I'm gonna do whatever I can to show him that I'm a threat. 
You're gonna not nominate me? That's insulting. Part of my strategy I use is complaining a lot. I try to break them down, demoralize them, really show them how miserable it is to be here. Truth is, it's not that bad. I was nominated four times on Big Brother 2. I couldn't care less. I think the fact that I enjoy being nominated makes me one of the most feared players here. I can't find an individual to hate because I hate you all. I'm gonna ask to be removed from this game by you all. Don't use it, vote me out. I have made the target on my back so giant that it's become invisible. I took huge steps today, told everyone I hated them. We'll see what happens. By a vote of nine to zero, Jace, you have been evicted from the Big Brother All-Star House. Danielle wants Chilltown to win the power of veto. However, we have our own agenda. As long as one of us isn't going up, we don't care what happens. How he thought he was safe. You know why he thought that? Well, because I told him he was safe. If anyone tells you they can play the Big Brother game efficiently without lying, they're lying to you. If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. HOH is the worst thing that can happen to you. I do not at all like it that Mike Boogie won that HOH because now Chilltown is the biggest, most obvious target in this house. That doesn't bode well for us. Right now in the house, Danielle and Erica, there's a lot of tension between them. It's hilarious. I'm the one who did this and no one's even mad at me. And Danielle, I'm gonna string her along just like I did with James, just like I did with Howie, just like I did with Marcellus. Hey, well, are you guys keeping me? Yeah. You gotta relax. Okay. All right. Oh my god. I'm not sure if Danielle's been watching this season. Maybe I should reintroduce myself. They call me the Puppet Master. Do you really think you're safe this week? Come on. Danielle was evicted immediately. Janelle won the HOH. You got her in another room to not put us up. So what's the bottom line? The bottom line is we're both still here. I really feel like this summer I've made a lot of mistakes in the house. After tonight, I'm done making mistakes. For Marcellus and Howie, I vote to evict you. Will, sorry. Oh. It's official, Will. You have been evicted from the Big Brother oh All-Star House. God. For me, there's no debate for who lands at the top spot. You have to know who it is at this point. At the number one spot, I have Dan Giesling. Dan has played Big Brother twice, where he was crowned the winner of Big Brother 10 and placed second on Big Brother 14. And across his two seasons, Dan has won four HOHs and three vetoes. After finding himself at the very bottom after one week of Big Brother 10, Dan turned on the Jets and started to play hard. In week two, Dan was nominated by Jesse, but due to Dan strategically being the only vote to save his friend Brian in week one, it gave off the impression that Dan was the type of guy who would be loyal until the end, and that earned him respect. Even with this respect from the HOH, Dan was still nominated but then he went on to do something pretty shocking. He threw the veto. He correctly assumed that he was not the target and he wanted to build this persona that he was a really weak competitor and it worked. People thought he wasn't good at comps and therefore was not a threat. So he unanimously survived eviction in week two and Dan was then able to use his weak persona to slither into a pretty decent spot in the upcoming weeks. Throughout the rest of Big Brother 10, Dan was able to get into the majority. Then he convinced Ollie to throw an HOH to him under the guise of a ludicrous deal that Dan ultimately went back on by choosing to send home Ollie's closest ally. Dan purposely did this to create the perception that a lot of jurors were mad at Dan, which increased his odds of the other house guests taking him to the final two if it came to it. Ultimately, it didn't come to that as Dan pretty much won out from that point on. And the only week he didn't win, he had his ride or die Memphis use the veto on him to keep him safe. So Dan enjoyed a ton of immunity for the second half of the game, leading up to him making the final two with Memphis, where he crushed the jury questions and became the first unanimous winner in the show's history. Dan's Big Brother 10 journey was a solid example of watching someone start from the bottom and maneuver their way all the way to the victory. Dan was already a top tier player after his Big Brother 10 performance. And due to being quite entertaining as well, it only made sense that he would come back. And this is where things get super good. Dan came in as a coach in Big Brother 14, and although he definitely had a bumpy start with two of his players going home in the first week, he was able to survive until the end of week three where he entered the game as a full-fledged player. Dan found himself in a four-person alliance with Danielle, Shane, and Brittany, and they were able to secretly scoop up Ian as well, and they became the Quack Pack. They used Ian as an informant to help get Boogie out and to try and get Frank out as well, but Frank kept winning comps to keep himself safe, and then Frank went on to win the HOH in week seven. Frank was getting tired of Dan at this point. He pretty much hated him, and Frank made it his mission to get Dan out on his HOH. So Dan was nominated, and not only did he end up losing the veto to Jen, but he lost a second veto to Ian, and he got a 24 hour our solitary confinement punishment. It was over for Dan. Nobody had come back from anything like this before. 
But then the funeral happened. Dan came up with a master plan to host his own funeral in front of everybody, act all nice, but then call out his closest ally, Danielle, and say that she was dead to him in the game to create a guise that they weren't working together. He then somehow was able to make a final two with Frank, who hated him and was saved with the veto because of it. Dan was a dead man walking just 24 hours earlier, but was now risen from the grave with new life in the game. From there, Dan was able to regain the trust from the alliance he had just betrayed. He made it to the final four where he once more pulled a fast one on Danielle and swindled her into saving him just for him to immediately evict her showmance. And then at the final three, he convinced both Danielle and Ian to throw part one of the final HOH to him. But that didn't really matter because they were both going to bring him to the final two anyways. Then at the final two, having one of the craziest resumes of all time, Dan was unfortunately not able to get the votes to win as the jurors A, did not want a former winner to win again, and B, a lot of them just felt super betrayed by Dan, so he ended up losing in a vote of 6-1 to one to Ian. But... It was still one of the most impressive games ever seen in the history of the show. It made Dan the only person at that point to make it to the final two twice. He had never had an eviction vote cast against him. He was a Big Brother winner with a second place finish as well. And he pulled off some of the most ridiculous moves ever imaginable. And he did it while having fun on the show the whole time. Dan Giesling is my Big Brother goat and he lands at the number one spot. I'm Dan and the other house guests are gonna get school. Coming into this house, I was gonna try to be cutthroat and do whatever it took to win. But I realized I'm not gonna sacrifice my word for $500,000. My initial reaction when Jesse won had a household was I'm going up, but I'm not gonna surrender. I still got a lot of fight in me, and, but I'm gonna have to get very creative. I gave Brian my word. Right. And even though I was exposed and I was hung out to dry, I still gave my word. So that's why I voted. You know? I honestly do trust Dan. I give him the utmost respect out of any player in here for standing by Brian all the way through, still giving him his vote. Now I have my foot in the door with Jesse, and if I can rope him into a deal, I'm gonna be sitting very, very, very pretty in this house. A lot of people think it would be insane to throw your only chance, but you know what? It's so insane that it just might work. Man! Kentucky, Iowa, Missouri. And that was incorrect. You have been eliminated from the game. By a vote of nine to zero, Stephen, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. My strategy is working exactly how I want it to work. Michelle thinks I'm weak, and it's going to continue to work and take me far in this game. And, uh, you know, it's worked on Michelle, and it's going to continue to work on everyone else in the house. Uh, you will always be Judas in my house. Dan, uh, this is your lucky day and not use the power of veto. Whatever the point of Jerry's speech was, it didn't accomplish anything. Nominations stay the same, no chance for me going home. I'd rather be lucky than be good. So Jerry, thank you very much. You know, I don't know if things in this house can get any, any, any better for me. This is incredible. This is the one thing that I could have asked for. Jerry has called me out in front of everyone and it's created so much sympathy for me, I can't even contain it. I'm thinking to myself, is there a way I can still seem weak and win HOH? Yes, of course. What I need to do is give almost all the HOH power to Ollie. I don't think there's any doubt I made one of the worst deals in Big Brother history and I couldn't be more excited about it. I feel very confident that it's going to all work out for me in the end, otherwise I wouldn't have done it. Now the thing about any time when you gamble, you're taking a risk and in this house someone's gambled with someone else's safety and unfortunately you better know who's making a bet for you and in this case Ali you lost the bet Michelle go on the block I walked through the door and I saw a lot of big personalities some tough physical competitors some athletes and then I realized you know I don't excel in any of those areas so how am I gonna win this game you know I'm gonna have to be more creative try to outthink people if I can and what I tried to do with replacement nominee roulette was upset Ali and Michelle, you know, but I needed to get some dislike to me in the jury house so Memphis would still take me should I get trapped in that position. And uh, thanks for a great summer. He's a good speaker. The winner of Big Brother 10. <laughs> As a coach, I'm down to one player in Danielle. That's it. If she goes up and gets voted out, I'm out of here. Big Brother's a lot like poker. As long as you just have one chip, you have a chance to win the whole thing. So I'm still okay in this game. I'm very excited about Ian committing to me, Brittany, Shane, and Danielle because he's a trustworthy number. If I have the opportunity to run all the way to the end with this kid, I'm gonna do it. I'm sitting there taking it, not defending myself because if I expose our mole Ian, the whole alliance will crumble. 
So I'm sitting here taking all this heat from Mike Boogie, and everyone knows I'm never gonna crack under pressure. But the interesting thing is, is that Ian's sitting there watching this all happen. I just hope you realize how much heat I'm taking for him and understands what I'm doing for the kid. Ian has finally shown some action to back up the Quack Pack. Up until this point, the Quack Pack never knew what Ian was gonna do. Now it's apparent what team he's on and where he's going in this game. Did you see what I freaking did out there? You're not a bad person, and this is chess. That's all a terrible is. person. No, you're not, man. I hook you up with my sister. That's how much I think of you, and I don't tell anyone that. I've got to keep him headstrong in this game so he can make the next big move that I need him to. If he's doubting himself, that's going to be a lot more difficult to get done. Frank wins the HOH. I'm in trouble. There's no doubt in my mind who he's going to put up. But I'm going to do whatever it takes to stay in this house, and I'm going to slither my way out this week one way or another. This game means so much to me, and I have so many opportunities to save myself and let it slip through my fingers is not easy to deal with. How am I gonna spin my way out of this one? Got 24 hours to think about it. Let's find a way out. I'm dressed in all black for a reason. I wanna welcome you guys all to my big brother funeral. So and finally, I know there's Danielle. The last time I played this game, I learned a lot of tough lessons early on. But in this game, you'll never earn my trust back. You know what you did. And in this game, you're dead to me. Did I really go crazy in solitary confinement? Or did I come up with a master plan to get myself out of this mess? Step two, go talk to Frank and blow up the quack pack. I brought this Bible up here, not to read to you, but to swear on. I'm selling out you and Mike in front of everyone. I didn't do that. Man, but if I went to Jen and said, Jen, I know this might sound a little crazy, but I want you to use the veto on Dan. I think she might do it. I have decided to use the power of veto on Dan. Jen just used the veto on me. Jen just used the veto on me. My plan actually worked, and only 24 hours ago, I was a dead man walking. Now I'm a risen man looking to take down everyone in my path. Can you at least get me a forewarning next time? No, because I need one crack. Right now, I have a final two deal with Danielle and a final two deal with Ian. The only person standing in my way of the finals is Shane. Right now, I'm telling Danielle exactly what she wants to hear because I want her to use a veto on me. But will I send Shane packing in a heartbeat? I've decided to use the power of veto to save you, Dan. So you're gonna have one shot to break up, and this is that shot. So Shane, I'm sorry I have to evict you. I just won this first round of the final HOH because I convinced not one, but two people into dumping their chances of winning a half million dollars all for me. Good job. Really fought hard. When this game was reset, I knew I was in a lot of trouble on the pirate ship. At the end of the day, I stood and said to myself, how can I win this game? And all signs pointed to me playing one type of game, and that's a ruthless game. Not because I wanted to, but because I had to. I had to do certain despicable things like host my own funeral to make people believe that Danielle and I would never work together ever again. Yeah, it was an act, and Joe had it figured out. So at the end of the day, I can only hope and pray that you vote for who played this game, not with a photographic memory, not someone who pulled the gold ball out of an arcade machine, but who played with the tools they had 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Thank you for your time. I hope you guys aren't mad at me, and I hope you're not too disgusted with me. Congratulations, Ian. You are the winner of Big Brother. Enzo, Eric, Hayden, June, Maggie, Nicole, Vanessa, Tyler, Paul, Danielle, Andy, Cody, Derek, Will, Dan. This is my top 15. I know there will be disagreements with this list, and that's okay. There will never, ever be a 100% accurate list out there and this is just my take. But if you disagree a lot with me, let me know why and tell me your top 15 players of all time because I'd be very curious to see. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, consider subscribing. I, of course, need to give that extra special shout out to all of my YouTube members who realistically make up the entirety of my top 15. And as always, if any of you tell Josh that he didn't make the top 15, you're dead to me. And here's a clip for you on your way out.
No what, Kevin? You claim that you're not a liar? Well, why don't you come clean about this one? Well, you told me you did. You did, K, Kevin. You did. did. Where are your kids? You did. Swear, Mike. Don't even bring my kid's name up. You're, you're lying. lying. Yeah, I'm a big mouth fool that's calling you out on being a liar. Shut I your mouth. I, I, I want you. To, I need it. I talk about me because everyone set them up. Who set me up? You have a little chump. Are you me right now? This is the game. Good plan, or you you think it's weird? I think it's weird. Do you have another option? No. Okay, then. 